I said, Brother Imam, I agree with about 60% of what you say. Now there's 40% of what you say that I'm not in agreement with. He said, well, why don't you preach what you agree with? I said, Brother Imam, I said, I can't do that. Because if I preach what I agree with, some of that 40% that I disagree with will come out and it will confuse an already too confused group of people. This is my God's honest truth and this is on record and on tape. You can play it for him. He's my brother. He's the son of my father. And I could never do anything to hurt the son of my father if I love my father. Even if I disagree with the son, I can't do anything to hurt him and won't permit anybody to do anything to hurt him if I know anything about him. We met again in Washington. And I told him that I was leaving. What you don't know, I was leaving the nation and I was going to make a movie on the life of Malcolm X. I had met with James Baldwin at the funeral of Godfrey Cambridge. And he gave me the script. He sent it to me. We talked about it, he and Maya Angelou. And I think, Brother Wahid, were you present with me then? Yes, sir. Come on up here, Brother Wahid. Yeah, you can sit down there, Brother Wahid. <laughs> I called him Wahid. Come on, because he was the first one to believe in me oh. Oh. and to come to help me oh. in this work. He was the first. Oh. When I came outside the hotel room oh. after three days locked up oh. and my light was turned back on, when I came out of the cave, I saw him. Oh. And he saw me lit up. And he said, well, brother minister, he said, whatever you're going to do, I want to be with you. Right. Isn't that what you said? That's right. That's right. Well, I don't want to keep this too long. What time? Teach. Oh, Teach. All night. 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 Well, I think I've been here long. You've been here long time. Never too long. But I just, I just, um, isn't it funny when you start telling the history? You know, to remember, you know. But I was going to make this movie on Malcolm, and I went to uh, Uganda and to Egypt. Brother Akbar was with me, formerly known as Brother Larry. He was with me. And uh, Idi Amin, the ruler of Uganda, called Gaddafi and told Gaddafi that there's a man here that I want you to meet. Idi Amin flew me on his plane from Kampala, Uganda to Tripoli, Libya with a stop in Khartoum, Sudan. And unfortunately, there was a brother from Ghana who was the, to be our driver. Mr. Gaddafi was in Tobruk celebrating the kicking out of the Americans and the British. <laughs> and we were supposed to fly to Tobruk to meet him and the, the driver came late and he said oh don't worry he said they're always late here they don't, don't worry <laughs> when we got to the airport the plane was taken mm. off mm. so I didn't see Gaddafi I saw members of his staff and they laughed and made mockery mm. 
of my idea to do a movie on the life of Malcolm. And believe it or not, I was going to play Malcolm. And the reason I felt that I could play Malcolm was because I had walked so many um, miles, I would say, in his shoes, except that last mile. I want to take that trip. Go ahead. And I went to Mecca from from Libya, and I asked the scholars in Mecca would they back us in making a movie on Malcolm's life because I thought it would bring a lot of people to Islam. At that time, I had not come back to the teachings of Ali Elijah Muhammad. But I felt Malcolm's transitions would be a great teaching tool to bring our people to see the value of Islam. But I was just not the man to do it. And it wasn't for me to do. And it wasn't time. But they rejected me. And I came back and was awakened and started to rebuild. Now, to conclude, if the nation had not fallen apart, our people would not be in the abyss of hell that they're in right now. We have to take some share of the responsibility for the destruction of our poor people. Because when the nation of Islam was strong, there were gangs, but the gangs respected the fearless FOI. And wherever we went, women felt safe. Crime was reduced. But when we fell apart, our people had nothing to hold on to. They became confused. And the result of it is that the message has raised a group of people that are like, you know, the, have you ever seen the movie uh, The Night of the Walking Dead? Yes, Where these cats just come up out the tomb? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and they're out there just raising hair. Yes, yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. Well, that's what you see that's right. in the ghettos across this nation. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Islam is in the people. Yes, sir. You listen to the rappers. Right. The rappers are rapping. They're rapping Islam. But they're not in the moral side of it. They're not highly elevated in the spiritual side of it. So they are in the tomb, meaning their flesh, and they are, they're talking, you know, but they're working the works of the flesh. They need resurrection. The life is in them, but the spirit is not in them. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. So their fearlessness, now they got guns and drugs. Yes, and so they're driving by just killing. Yes, right. So the, the part of God's nature of destruction is what they know. And that's what they're carrying out. Yes, but it really is because we yes, God, talk to us. are not on our post. Come on. Right. 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 Yes, in all due respect to their departed Captain Imam Yusuf Shah, he could have trained tens of thousands of young men like he trained us. And if he didn't do it, each one of us that he trained could have trained others. But we took our light and we hid it under a bushel basket. And we took our light and saw for ourselves personally and left the mission 